First, the importance of this case and this judge ruling. Uh, this is a profoundly important uh, case because generally when you're in this business of research and development, you rely on safe harbors. FDA approved drug, FDA approved labeling, state licensed doctors who, who write the RXs, and state licensed pharmacists who dispense. So you rely on the system and suddenly you hear that there's a problem. Un unfortunately, this whole epidemic could not have been foreseen 25 years ago. 25 years ago, we were talking about pain and how do you accelerate the treatment of patients. Nurses and doctors were being measured in terms of their pain management scores. If you were above five, that wasn't good for your grade. So there was a whole different mindset 25 years ago. And it's very unfortunate that we as society did not see this thing coming. And it's now a pretty bad scene. But I'm not sure if one particular pharmaceutical company should be held liable for this societal issue that we've seen here. I'm not surprised that's your point of view. I say that respectfully as a person who used to be an executive in the pharma industry. But do you think that who needs to be held accountable for, for what we've witnessed in, in our communities in this country? Well, obviously, uh, if people were not good at managing the supply chain, they allowed things to leak out. Or if uh, people spoke outside labeling, uh, that is certainly bad. But to just single out one company that was 1% of the supply chain is, seems a little broad. Well, there, seems... are, there are many, though, who are potential, uh, potentially at risk of facing sort of similar lawsuits like Johnson & Johnson. It's not necessarily just one. This happens to be the first. I, I think this is going to be quite a big thing. Uh, I think we need to be measured in the amount of damages awards that are going to occur here. The most important thing is to focus on the patients. We need to focus on prevention, on treatment, and early intervention when there's an overdose. Uh, and and I, I really think that's the important thing that needs to be looked at, not trying to make up for state spending locally at the state level. A lot of this money is going to go to deal with local state deficits. That's a little broad. It should be just focused on the patients. I mean, the argument, though, Fred, around the public nuisance charge was that they aggressively marketed the use of these opioids to cure pain and downplayed the sort of negative aspects, the risk of addiction, which spiraled out of control into this, in this company. So it's, it's really around how they marketed it, isn't it? Well, that's usually the complaint that occurs in this area. It is severe. It's, it's, it's monitored by the federal government very aggressively. The DOJ looks at this. There have been many, many decisions. J&J and many other companies are extremely compliant with the law. They stay within labeling. They teach their salespeople how to be compliant. Uh, I think there might have been a few breakdowns, but generally, if you look at the company, this company systemically is a very strong company, very strong compliance system. They've got a great credo, a great CEO. I don't believe that they would have those kinds of breakdowns. If, if you were, were running J&J &J today, and as we said, some of the estimates had the, 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 the payment as high as $2 billion. Yeah. So it's 572 on its face. Would you appeal it or would you just pay it, think you got off better than you otherwise might have and just move on? What would you do? I think from a money point of view, you can see that the market is reacting in a positive manner. This is more a matter of principle. I can't speak for J&J. I'm speaking for myself. I think this is a matter of principle. If you stay, if you work by the rules, if you play by the rules, why should you get singled out for something that's developed from a societal point of view? Obviously, the biggest contribution a pharmaceutical company can make under these circumstances is to bring up new drugs that are a super aspirin or a super Advil that does not have the addictive qualities. It is really a pity that with all the great science that we have these days, we're still relying on opioids to manage pain. We need to do more in that area. So, does CBD fall into that category? That's another one where a lot of energy is going, but I personally have my doubts because the science is not well developed there. But there's a lot of noise out there right now and a lot of money going into that area.